I, I don't know why I thought college. He's definitely in high school, but like, how do you get rejected a t- hundred times before high school? Yeah, well, this dude you, must not put on deodorant. He must smell like he must smell like poopy. He must not shower, dude. You gotta shower. I do. The Snaggletooth will say yes. Go ask Snaggletooth. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to the Anime Summit Podcast. It's your favorite host from the most Sam, the bomb. And of course, with me every week is Nick. I'm here to chew bubblegum and slay goblins. And I'm all out of gum. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Fucking go- Goblin. Goblin Surya. That's Sudi's favorite show, dude. Um, No Danny this week because she's on vacation. So she's missing part one. But she'll be back for part two, and she'll give us a lowdown on all the stuff she's watching. That that being said, um, oh, oh that because we're doing fall impressions. I didn't even say that. We're doing fall first impressions, part one. Fall first impressions, part one. Fall twenty twenty three. All twenty twenty three. To be and, specific. Yeah, twenty twenty three fall first impressions. And so because Danny's on vacation, she'll be back for part two, and we're going to avoid. There's there's a few shows that she gave us where she was like most I of the to- popular ones honestly yeah most of the popular ones she kind of she was like I I don't I wait wait to talk about these till I come back so we purposely avoided those me and Nick each got a little smallest going I'll we'll think get them next sampled. week we're doing a little bit of a plummet episode this week if you will I'm not gonna lie to you I stepped into plummet territory a little bit and I was like oh shit this is actually kind of good <laughs> like. There was a few that I watched <laughs> oh I thought I you like, did the Ryan Gosling where you're like ooh. <laughs> ooh. Um, but yeah, dude, so that being said, let's just jump right into it, dude. Um, I'm going to tell you about this real quick. Beep. Links.animesummit.net, okay? That's where you can go to find all the links to where to follow, where to listen, to subscribe to our YouTube, follow on social media. And also, uh, go to animesummit.net. That's our merch store. Get a t-shirt. We're going to be dropping some new shirts uh, soon, some some new designs soon. So... Hala Chiguala. Otherwise, there's some cool, just regular logo stuff on there. You can get a hoodie with a logo on it. Um, there's a mug. You know, get a mug. Um, and also a patreon.com slash anime summit. Become a patron and give Honey Bear more freckles on her nose. Pretty soon, it's just going to be all brown with all the patrons we got going on. It's going to be just a brown nose. She's got a freckly nose. And uh, by the way, patrons, when a new shirt drops, our new design on the store drops give you a ten percent off code uh, f- for that new drop, just for you patrons, okay? And also, you guys get episodes early, exclusive podcast content. Me and Danny, and we're talking this past weekend just not just for shits and giggles, and we were talking about you know some doing some patron only podcasts because we haven't done those in a while. Like we do solo casts, you know, where it's just like where it's just one of the hosts, you know, but we haven't done like an exclusive patron where it's only for patrons. Like we never released it to anyone else. You know what I mean? So, uh, we were talking about some ideas for that. And so that, that stuff is cool. You know, you guys get your own exclusive podcast and things like that. So look forward to that. Okay. If you become a patron, uh, that being said, let's not waste no more time. Question of the week, Nick. Cause I couldn't, <laughs> I didn't have access to the fucking question. She like Danny does. <laughs> so I just put, this all right. Question. This is from a person named some? Some? I don't know who that is. Yeah, some. <laughs> It's from Sam. Uh, and they say, what's your favorite cat? <laughs> who or what? Where? When? When? Wh- why? How? What is your favorite cat? Are we talking about our Discord cats? Any, any cat ever. Like fictional or non-fiction Discord cats. So like Cat Bus, uh, the cats from the musical Cats. <laughs> Yeah, dude. Cat woman. Cat one. <laughs> Selena Kyle, dude. Katniss Everdeen. Dude, I <laughs> I called I called Honey Bear Fatness Everdeen the other day, <laughs> and Trisha got so mad. <laughs> oh my god. Nah, man, Yukichi. You could talk about Yukichi from um, Masterful Cat from last season. Dude, Are we talking right? about anime cats or real cats? Any any kind, any kind. I don't even care. Okay, dude. on the server, on the Discord server, Fucking... I gotta go with my boy Sylvester. Oh yeah, Sylvester, dude. 
Uh, there's there's a there's a hot newcomer mittens. Oh yeah, mittens. There's like three or four different colors on that cat. I can't even tell what's going on. It's like yeah, Rocky Road ice cream. <laughs> it's this cat. I think it's I think it's her dad's Cookies and cream. Cat or, I don't know. Danny's wherever Danny's because Danny's visiting her dad on vacation, and I think that's his cat or whatever. And mittens wants to be by Danny all the time, and it's super fucking cute, dude. She looks like a fat turtle. Turtley, long-haired fat cat. Mittens. Let's see. Best best fictional cats. Let's see what uh, Ranker has to say. Dude, right now, I'm on that I'm on that Mallory train right now. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh, Mallory's funny. Yeah, yeah I'm on Ma- the Mallory train right okay, now. Okay, my favorite fictional cat has got to be Garfield, though. Garfield. He likes lasagna. Um... I'm on that I'm on that masterful cat hype right now still, so uh Yukichi from Masterful Cat is depressed. Is he's so funny, dude. He's just a big cat. He's a Maine Coon. So yeah, I love Maine Coons. I want a Maine Coon cat really bad. Uh there's they get really huge. Really huge, and sometimes they don't know they're really huge. So they just they just think they're little cats. Oh it's also because like Luna is She's not gonna get any bigger, and she still looks like a kitty. Like people, people will come over and be like, "Oh man, like how old is she? She's still a baby." I'm like, "No, dude, she's like fucking seven. Like, <laughs> like she's fucking, <laughs> she's a little cat." Anyways, good answer, good answer, Nick, good answer. Uh, is that the soundboard, or are you saying that? <laughs> no, that, yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's all me, dog. Um, Nick, you want to do waifu and his banner for Danny since she, all right, since he's a traitor, she's not here, ditch her. Waifu and his bando, ha oh, We have Claire Francois from I'm in Love with the Villainous. Ha oh, She has drill hair and she does the old Osama laugh. Oh, ha oh, 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 oh. oh, that was Danny calling in. Wow, thanks, Danny. Yeah, yeah. yeah Danny's calling in. Good job, Danny. <laughs> well, who's the husbando, Danny? Oh, thank, I'm glad you asked. Husbando is Sunraku from Shangri-La Frontier. He's got a bird mask and he's kind of <laughs> naked a little bit. And he likes to fight. Oh. <laughs> thanks, Danny. <laughs> wow, Nick, thanks for getting that recording of Danny beforehand. I didn't yeah. think it to do that. Yeah, good job. Yeah, shout out, Danny, for, <laughs> and shout out, Nick, for getting that recorded for us. Uh, I edited that in just now. Uh, <laughs> I just want Danny to yell in Discord when she hears that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's going to <laughs> She's going to be like, you ass, you bitch. Um, dude. Um, let's just jump right in, man. Fall first impression part one. And again, like I like I said, we kind of are just uh, purposely avoiding any ones that Danny wanted to talk about. She wanted us to wait on number one. Number two, I want to explain this just because I feel like we didn't I we didn't explain this well enough when when we started doing it. But so before the way we used to do first impressions was you go to the the page, the seasonal page. And you look at the first show, and then we talk about every other from the first going down, and then pick yeah, up any stragglers yeah. at the end. Then, for but there's part, so many shows still. Yeah, and then <laughs> we for, miss a lot. And then for part two, you go to the second show, and then every other from there. So we kind of like reviewed it as like a checker thing, going from yep. part one to part two. The reason we stopped doing that a couple, I don't know, maybe about a year ago, is because like now the top of the the top of the seasonal pages are flooded with sequels and we're not all watching those. So the way kind of the way Nick kind of told us to do it now is just watch what you're watching, watch as much stuff as you can. And then, you know, when you finish what you finish is what you finish. Right. So that's kind of how we've been doing it. So the only reason we use Mal as a guide now is because it's already listed in an order for us. And then we just go down the list to say, like, okay, who's watching this? Okay, next one. We don't use it as, like, a watch guide. We use it just as a a list guide for, like, the order we talk about them for these first impressions and stuff and reviews. Just because it's easy. It's already listed there. Because if we were to go by, like, anyone's one person's list on our show sheet, it would be all over the place because we're all watching different shit. So it's just yeah, easier. There's, to- no, there's no easy way to do it. Yeah, so the easiest Unless we way- want to have, like, three podcasts, you know. Right, yeah, right. So, and the reason why, too, is because then that way you guys can also go to the Malice and be like, okay, this is the order they talked about it in. Um, so if Yeah, you- we, we try to put show notes on them. 
So if you if you hear me say like, oh, Spy Family season two, then you'll know we're at the beginning of the podcast still, or at the top of the list still, and then we're going down or whatever. Uh, so we yeah, just we use just go as, in order, we're popularity descending. Yeah. So we just use it as an order guide, not a watch guide. Um, but that being said, that's how we do it now, especially because we're watching so much different shit now, and you know we're not all watching the same sequels and stuff. So, um, yeah, anyways. fuck Tokyo Ghoul. Fuck Tokyo. Shit's Ghoul. mid. <laughs> Tokyo. Not Ghoul, Tokyo dude. Ghoul. Tokyo. Whatever the fuck. Tokyo Avengers. I already forgot the name. <laughs> <laughs> dude, yeah, and so in in also in, I think Tokyo Ghoul is a bad one. But anyway, go ahead. It, the, the sequel. I heard the yeah the sequel. Is. Yeah, the sequel's not as good. So it's funny because the the top nine or twelve shows are all ones that we're gonna wait on because Danny wants to talk about a lot of these. There's there's a couple. There's a couple here, and also like the the top three are all sequels that I'm not like. Um, I like, I'm doing Goblin Slayer, so we can just start there. Oh, nice. Okay, so yeah, Goblin Slayer, dude. The people have been waiting for this one for a long time because when did the first season come out? Oh, it was a couple of years. No, yeah, it was it like was... four years ago or something. Yeah, dude, it was a while ago. I should fucking look that up. Uh, prequel, Goblin Slayer. Oh, Goblin's Crown. I think this is a movie. Oh, shit. I didn't even watch the movie yet. Okay. Uh, I'm going to add that to watching. All right. Nice, <laughs> nice. Oh, there's a recap of the first season in the movie. Interesting. Okay. Prequel, Goblin Slayer. little research on the podcast. This is uh, 2018. It's been five years. Holy shit. Damn. <laughs> that does not feel like five years. Holy shit. Okay. 2020 by itself felt like 10 years, but everything else has felt like zero. So. All right. Anyway, Goblin Slayer. Um, yeah. It is what it, what it sounds like. You got a guy who's obsessed with killing goblins. Season one, it starts very brutally with, uh, we'll just say, a, a scene that is not for the squeamish. And then it actually kind of get turns into like a more of a normal anime then, but it's just showing you like the dangers of goblins because it, you know, in in RPGs and stuff, goblins are usually low level enemies. You know, they'll swarm you a little bit, but they're not they're not that dangerous. But in Goblin Slayer, it's like, oh no, they actually are dangerous. They'll fucking kill you. They're like a big threat. <laughs> so, yeah, they're like a yeah. Well, really, what it is is like most of the fighters are are weaker than they think, and so goblin. Goblin Slayer, that's that's the guy's name. I'm just going to call him that. He, yeah, you don't know his He never name, takes yeah. off his helmet. <laughs> He's just so cringe. Uh, and then all the girls like him because this is what I've learned. Uh, the ladies love a guy where you can't see his face. Oh, yeah. Because let's be honest. Guys' faces are fucking ugly, okay? <laughs> that's not – okay, we just Am love, I wrong? We love a man in uniform, kind of. Somewhat. Most most guys have ugly faces. All right? That's Just, not true. When in doubt, guys, fucking put on a mask or something. <laughs> put on a helmet. I'm not kidding. It adds a little mystery. You makes them being, watch you. That is not true. Motorcycle helmet's great because then they can look at their own reflection because ladies are the only attractive ones. All right. Anyway, <laughs> Goblin Slayer. Yeah, so season two. Season one, they fight off goblins. It's, it's pretty fun. Uh, <laughs> I'm speeding through it. Season two, though, it's... They're, they meet, like, this new adventurer who's, like, this annoying kid. Uh, what's his fucking name? Glasses Boy. Anyway, he's, like, a mage or something. Um, and it just it's just kind of, like, there's not a lot to say in the first three episodes. They start to get attacked in episode three. These, the Goblin Slayer's training these new adventurers. Yeah, you get to talk to the lizard man and the old the old potion guy, you know. It's not like I don't have a lot to say right now. Uh, oh, the new guy. Here we go. Shonen uh, Majusushi. So, so yeah. you're saying like it hasn't just it just hasn't gotten into it yet, or? Yeah, you got the plucky upstarts who are starting to learn, and I think it's going to pick up after episode three. I think. Um, that's the only ones that were dubbed so far. Sure. So I'm I'm choosing to watch it dubbed. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I watched some of these shows dubbed too. By the way, um, but yeah. Yeah, it's not like a super emotional show, in my opinion. It's just kind of like a fun entertainment show. It's like it's entertaining. You're in it for the badass moments or whatever. I don't know. It's just it's like a video game to me. It's like yeah, it's it's a compulsion to watch it, but I I don't feel very much from it. You know, I similar just... to a video game, but it's very popular. So, I mean, I would recommend it. I'd recommend the first 
episode of the first season at least if if nothing else just watch that first episode because <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy but i just like that's all i got for now i just liked when Sudi got into it he was he his discord name for like a couple months was just goblin slayer <laughs> <laughs> it's well it's it's cool because he is like a one-track mind i kill goblins fuck you <laughs> that's oh, you're what a it goblin? is you're gonna die i'm gonna kill you i'm gonna kill you yes yeah. yeah he's like um He's like Master he's Chief. He's autistic except, for goblins. <laughs> he's Master Chief, but more, yeah, he's just more straightforward, no only one track mind kind of thing. But yeah, dude. Okay. I but you're you're in it though. You like Goblin Slayer. You're gonna watch it. I mean, I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna watch it. It's fun. I would say. Let's see. I don't know. Like none of the characters really stand out too much. It's mostly like a concept type of anime. I like the concept of it. Sure. Um. And Goblin Slayer himself is probably like the main one, just because like the thing he's. Oh, you know what? It reminds me of John Wick, right? Probably. Sure. I mean, the action scenes aren't as good because sure. you know that's like professional Hollywood type stuff. But like this is like it's a one guy he can do one thing. <laughs> yeah, he's all for vengeance. He fucking hates something, and that's what it is. The so thing, if you like John Wick, you like Goblin Slayer. Yeah. The thing that sucks is. Like, because they, Lightning Films, they put have been putting in work in Goblin Slayer, right? And it happened to air at the same time Tokyo Avengers did. And Oh, I've, yeah, stretching thin. I've seen Lightning Films do some pretty good stuff, and then Tokyo Avengers animation is like, eh. But anyways, I don't want to talk about that, because Daniel, Daniel will want to talk about that later. But I mean, the Goblin Slayer animation isn't f- super great. It's fine, so I wouldn't yeah. say... Too high obviously, above. like when a when a badass moment happens, it's like, oh shit! But yeah, they do the sakuga a little bit. They do the sakuga thing, yeah. If okay. you can't handle me at my derp, then you can't handle me at my sakuga. You can't, at my handle, me at my <laughs> can't handle me at We're my sakuga. Can't handle me at my. We're skipping like sins. a whole bunch after that one. Uh, Shangri La Frontier. Yeah, we're going pretty far down. Pretty far okay, down. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> oh no, no, no! There's one, there's one. There's one before that. There's one before that. Uh, really? Kingdoms of Ruin. Is Danny watching that one? Oh, I watched the I first watch this one. I two. didn't watch this one. I didn't watch it. This is another kind of revenge style anime. It's actually kind of like Goblin Slayer. It's like the guy and the girl, right? Yeah. Um, I'm surprised Goblin Slayer is not up here on the recommendations. It's, on it's a little list. bit. It's on Danny's list, but it's not one that she was like, yeah, hey, it's wait not for me. Yeah. It's a little bit. It's recommended if you like Shield Hero or, God, if you liked Redo of Healer, then you'll like it. <laughs> Oh, Elf and Lead. Okay, it did remind me of Elf and Lead. So, like, the guy... Here's here's basically the story. Humanity has witches. Uh, now times are changing. Humanity builds this scientific gear expansion that makes magic and witches obsolete. So they try to liberate themselves and kill the witches, exterminate the witches. Um, first episode, they fucking... They fucking murk this witch who's, who's the uh, uh, teacher of the main character named Adonis... What a fucking name, Adonis. <laughs> that's like that's like what I would name Adonis. my kid. That's stupid. <laughs> uh, Don, your name's Adonis, so you have to be jacked. <laughs> you have to be jacked. You're not allowed to sit on the couch. <laughs> <laughs> he can't um, scratch his back because it's like his muscles are too huge. He's like, ah. Yeah, he's just fucking ripped, dude. Yeah, dude. dude. If you don't look like Brad Pitt, I'm disowning you. <laughs> um, I'm disowning you. <laughs> but yeah, sorry, my... My throat's kind of bugging me today, but the, uh, yeah. So they kill his, his, his mentor mm-hmm. in episode one and they do it pretty brutally. Uh, and so like he eventually, they, they put him in like this prison kind of like Elfin lead where he's like totally wrapped up from head to toe. Sure. And then he breaks out and fucking mercs a bunch of guards, not the same gore level of Elfin lead, but, um, but on yeah. Some so then seven he, type shit, like he's on a mission. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's just vengeance. So this is the middle of that vengeance campaign. I guess Goblin Slayer is kind of after his vengeance a little bit, but um, yeah. So so Adonis meets this girl named uh, I think it's Dora. I've only watched first two, uh, Dorica, and she's this pink haired chick. I think Monica does Monica Real do that? No, no. Alexis Tipton does her voice. I was I watched the dub on this one too. I try to watch dubs whenever I can, just because it's easier. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that. He 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 starts just like rampaging and just like killing everybody that he can, and he what he can do is he can like 
he has this power to change like the shapes and sizes of stuff. I forget the name of it, but like he can use his wizard power with like a pen and uh basically he can do some he can do some chainsaw man shit, but like where he like he turns a bullet into the size of a building and like shoots a building with it. <laughs> um so yeah, he's just like kill them all, fuck them. They're all, they're all complicit. And that's kind of where it's where it is on episode 2 and she, he runs into her and then she gets shot at the end of episode two, and I I don't know what happens after that, but I, you know, mm. um, yeah. So it's one of those shows. Mm. I'm simplifying a little bit. You think um, you're gonna watch it? I don't know. It didn't seem seven point two on Mal. It this didn't, is by I feel like it wasn't grabbing me when I just watched Yokohama Action Lab PV. It's or okay. Yeah. If you're into like a vengeance type of story, you could do worse. Um, I've only watched first two. I think this one, this one, you probably want more than two episodes to really find out what's happening. Yeah, maybe because apparently, apparently they have the ability to resurrect his mentor, but I, I don't know. So like, if that's the case, where they can just like Dragon Ball people, like, it kind of defeats the purpose and makes it a little cheap, you know? Oh sure. Or like, oh she died, but actually she's not really. You can bring her back, you know? I don't know. If that happens, I'm gonna be a little disappointed. Well, it's kind of like, kind of feel that way about Dragon Ball Super. The last, the last arc in Dragon Ball Super is, um, that we saw animated anyway, the Tournament of Power. That was the most highest stakes ever in a Dragon Ball like arc, and they should have just left it there. Now, just kind of like, what are we watching? Yeah, now? stuff has to matter, you know. Yeah, it has to matter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, and, although I continue to watch it because and read it because I love it, but. Um, fucking what's his name? Captain Crunch, the the cereal planet, granola, granola. He was cool, dude. Granola. Anyways, hell yeah. Um, get your fiber. Fiber. <laughs> they should have had a character named that fiber. No, they had granola. It was called Planet Cereal, and the main the guy was named Granola, and he was like, he was just kind of bad. He was this badass sniper guy. Anyways, fucking Goku was. Some kind of god or some shit. Anyways, dude. Okay, Kingdom is a ruin. Okay, so you don't think you're gonna keep watching it though, or no? Eh, maybe, maybe not. It's it's kind of mid. It's too mid. Too mid. It has good parts. Mid-mid? It has mid parts. It has mid parts. Okay, dude. Um, Shangri La Frontier. This one's fun. This is the manga that Noxie recommended to me on the second manga therapy, and. I had actually started reading it, and then I kind of forgot about it because I was reading ten other things. Um, so this is a lot, you know, a lot of it's it was familiar to me for a little bit, and then you know, after getting into it, I was like, oh man, this is awesome. I fucking love Birdface Johnson, obviously, but basically, this is just uh, a game, a game anime. It's a they're playing a VR MMO called Chain Without Frontier, and um. The main guy, Rakuro, um, he's Otome. His in-game name that people will refer him to the most is Sanraku, like uh, like Danny said on the recording earlier. Um, but he he like loves playing shitty games, like plummet level RPG, visual novel type RPG games, and whatever. He just loves doing it because. He loves beating. He just loves beating the shit out of him, and just he'll go and buy a game, a really shitty game. He'll play through it, and then put it under his belt like a trophy. And then he gets recommended to play Shangri La Frontier, which is this really pop. It's like the most popular MMO in this this story. And he's like, he's into it. He's like, wow, I actually forgot what it's like to play a really like fun game for once. And he gets really into it, and he he kind of does the area one grind a little bit so like he's staying in the the beginning area until he's like level you know 11 12 13 or whatever and i don't know what i like about it is that he's not like this overpowered character right away he just like you know it's it's showing him playing the game and having fun with it and then so there's nothing like there's no weird catch or anything um you know at least not right now i'm sure there will be some more conflict type shit later 
but there's this girl who at his high school that likes him and her name is uh uh I forgot her real name but her her character is the is the Cyger Zero the the big knight dude apparently she's like a god at the game or whatever and she likes him and so anyways <laughs> it's really funny because you don't even see her. The first four episodes is just the guy. Yeah, you don't. I I think that's. I'm pretty sure that's her. You see her in the beginning when she's trying to talk to him at school, and then you see her at the end of episode two when she's looking for him at the the gate boss before going into the second town or whatever, the snaky snake, which like I'm pretty sure that's her because she's all like, oh, I gotta look for him or whatever, because the game store lady was like. Oh, I'm gonna recommend him this game because I know she likes him and I know she plays it, blah, 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 or whatever. And so, which is kind of cute. It's like that's the super cute part. But he <laughs> he spends hours just like getting through the first area. And he actually skips the first town because he's like, I'm already over here grinding shit. And he gets poisoned, and so he's trying to run to like the second in to save the game before he dies. And um he makes it right on time, right before he dies. It's really fun. It's a really dude, it's really fun. It's not there's nothing fucking weird about it. And I so this is one of those things where for me, it's gonna rely on the characters to like make it interesting and carry the show, right? Carry the story. And the main guy is really funny. He's just this big fucking nerd. He makes his avatar naked. You know, he's like the let me solo her guy from Elden Ring, you know? He just he just wears shorts and a bird mask. <laughs> and he's, he's his class that he chose is like a uh, they call it a mercenary twin blade, but you could say it's like a twin, a twin blader from dot the dot hack series. It's basically that. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm I'm sure what's gonna happen soon is we're gonna meet more characters. It's gonna be more fun, more ridiculousness of just nerds playing a, a fun game. Except take it like this, right? I'm sure later it'll get more serious, but right now it's like Sao without the serious like stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is kind of refreshing in a weird way for me. Cause I know there's a bunch of these animes that have come out recently in the form of, you know, reincarnated as this, you know, you have Bo Furry, Bo Foofer. But they a lot of those try and do this weird catch thing where it's like, oh, the catch in the Bo Furry is her defense is just really high and that's why she's so powerful. The catch in this one is that his mom is the MMORPG goddess and she gets these powerful swords and Multi hit combo attacks, whatever. Uh, the catch in this one is she's she's got three boobs instead of two. Or I don't know. You know what I mean? Like oh oh. But in this one, it's just like a guy having fun and getting really into it, and how it affects his love for games and his taste for games. And maybe he was going about gaming all wrong this whole time and discovering having fun. And I'm sure later we'll get more serious things happening and more crazy things will happen. But it, for right now, I, I, I enjoy it for what it is. It's nothing fancy. It's very, like, if you can, it's, it's kind of like making uh, making a, 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 a pie, okay? Like an apple pie. You do it how it's supposed to be done, you're going to have a good pie, okay? You don't, don't put any of your fancy poo-poo shenanigans on it. Just make a fucking pie, okay? Make the dough, roll out the dough, put the caramelized apples in the thing, Put a crust on it, put it in the oven, take it out. If you can do something simple but do it really well, then it's going to be good. So, um, I don't know. I like it a lot. Uh, I don't know if Nick watched. I kind of talked forever there. Sorry. But, Nick, what did you do? Uh, it's okay. I got a sore throat. Uh, Shangri-La Frontier. Here we go. I for- <laughs> I just blanked for a second. Um, Yeah, you, you were mentioning how it's a little different from the other... RPG SAO clones. Yeah. Cuz in this one you really only have the main character for the first 3 or 4 episodes. Yeah. You don't have like his guild or his group or anything like that. They'll probably show up later and this is going to be 25 episodes. So, I enjoyed I enjoyed it to an extent cuz like he was figuring out the world and all these shows, like they're always like, "Oh, I'm figuring out the world. I'm min maxing, blah blah blah," um, or I'm like going all in on one stat or something. This this was kind of 
it was kind of interesting because like he actually did get punished at one point when he fought a, a certain monster. I guess I won't spoil what it is, but he fights a certain monster and, and gets like a long term punishment from that. And he's got to work find workarounds for that. So well, that was yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, and then when he meets the the rabbit people, it got kind of silly. So, um, yeah, I'll see how it goes. I mean, th- this this cl- clearly needs more episodes. Like, I do want to see other characters. Like, I, I want other things to happen besides him just min maxing. You know. Yeah. It's still entertaining. Like, this is better than most of the other RPG shows, but it it still needs the 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 interplay element. Or like the character interaction stuff, other than him just being with NPCs or random other characters. Yeah, yeah, and I think that's kind of why I dig it as well because obviously, like, um, it's very good at showing and not telling kind of thing, and it's like it's. I think okay, I guess you could say this right. The catch in this one, I guess, is the fact that he's been playing shitty games for so long that he kind of knows. Yeah, yeah. Well, he, yeah, he's like, oh, it's, uh, what do you call it? Unfair is not unbeatable or something like that. He said something like that. He kind of uses his skills and experience playing those shitty games for so long that, like, he can kind of get around knowing how to do certain things in this game. So I guess, like, you could say that's a little OP or whatever. But he's that's like his strength. He's like a, he's a gamer who can find any, like, uh, loophole or weakness. Yeah. Yeah, which I guess you could say is like the OP part of him, but he starts at the beginning like everyone else does. He doesn't luck out with some weird armor or anything like that. Yeah, it's not like the reincarnated where it's like, oh, you have the strongest stat in the world or whatever. (laughs) Oh, you got this avatar that makes you an undead paladin god, whatever. Yeah, nothing like that. And so I think it's really cool, and I'm excited to kind of – it's refreshing to me. So like – plus I like like the design. I like the design of – Birdface Johnson, he's a bird man. He's, he wears a bird mask. He like doesn't like he likes he likes building his characters naked and wearing a mask to cover his face, which is hilarious. Um, so that's what he does. Uh, this is in Weekly Shonen Magazine, by the way. If anyone cares, there's 15 volumes out right now, and people love the manga. So, um, I might just watch the anime. You know, uh, maybe some down down time down the road, I'll start the manga again. But yeah, Shangri La Frontier, dude. Uh okay let's let's go down a little bit let's go down a little bit what do you got going on here now I got the next one actually it's uh hundred girlfriends this oh, you, is a this is a plummet, plummet one right here you're going to plummet yeah. territory what are you doing King close your ears you can't listen to it yeah King, shut up <laughs> and Gizmo and Mike and everybody yeah and Ed yeah fuck you guys oh yeah Ed too wait who else is on the plummet I think it's just everybody pretty much it, it's just everybody it's those four <laughs> though. <laughs> <laughs> it's the it's plummet. Ed they're like King and, and Gizmo. Yeah, they're 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 hiring process. Can you fog a mirror? <laughs> Can you fog You're in. a mirror? <laughs> God damn it, dude! I literally had a job interview like that one time where the guy's like, "Are you breathing? You're hired." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Well, you're honest. All right." <laughs> that was a while ago, but um, oh yeah, two days ago. You know, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> so yeah, hundred girlfriends. Who really, 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 really love you? That's the title of this. That's literally five the title. reallys. Wait, wait. One, um, two, there's three, only four. Oh, yeah, five there's reallys. question mark number of episodes, so I don't know how many. It's gonna you need at least fifty episodes for this. Two girlfriends and ep, you know. But two girlfriends probably won't do yeah, that. Yeah. Uh, it starts out with two main girls. You got uh, okay. You got the guy, the main guy, Rentero. He's like this. You know, he's like a high quality guy. Girls should like him, but for some reason they don't. Space and then uh, manga or something? Oh, let's okay. see. He gets hundred rejected a hundred times. Ooh. Goes to a matchmaking shrine. God of Shrine appears. And wait, what? Okay. He'll meet a hundred soulmates in high school. Okay, that's so weird. That's like his entire class pretty much. <laughs> I was gonna say, like that's like your whole I, I for some reason I thought he was in college. I don't know why I thought college. He's definitely in high school, but like how do you get rejected a t- hundred times before high school? Yeah, what this do dude you, must do not you put suck? on deodorant. He must smell like he must smell like poopy. You must not shower, dude. You gotta shower. I do. The Snaggletooth will say yes. Go ask Snaggletooth. <laughs> <laughs> Go ask um, Snaggletooth. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! And then okay. I I missed some of the details, but apparently, if any of his soulmates fail to get into a relationship with him, they will die. Uh, that's oh, awesome. 
That's how it should be, you know? That's how if it gr- should be. If a girl says no, she dies. <laughs> if he dies, God. he dies. <laughs> All right. He has a heart big enough for everybody. So it's it's just like it starts out kind of kind of normal actually. It's like a normal rom com. Starts with like a, a love triangle, him and two other girls. I fucking don't remember their names. Red haired. You got you got a girl with big boobs and you got a feisty girl. Okay, I don't even think they're on the poster. There's so many girls like you can't even remember them all. He just numbers them. Uh, I think okay, pink haired girl. Numbers them. And flat. I like the okay, pink haired girl. Yeah, yeah. Pink haired girl and uh, Karen. Hanazono. Karen. Karane. So, yeah, they, they do a thing where, like, we want our first kiss to all be at the same time or, like, to be random. So he, he devises this intricate plan to make it random. And it's kind of funny because, like, they keep he, – he blindfolds everybody and they put earbuds in so they can't tell who's who. And he keeps accidentally groping them and then they, they, like, kick him in the balls or whatever. And they have to start over. <laughs> and then he's like, wait a second. What if we all just kiss at the same time in a triangle? I'm like, you should have fucking started there. <laughs> Lead with that next time. I should watch that, dude. Yeah. It's fucking funny. Yeah, the, and the girls are like, I love you so much. I don't care if you two-time me. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you know you you're, you got to mate. That's how you know you right. made it. But, yeah, and then I think in the third episode, he starts to – did I get – I only watched two episodes, so that's how sure. far I got. It's in weekly uh, I'm sure it gets junk. crazy. Oh, there's a there's a teacher in this ep, in this anime that mm-hmm. is like the girl from The Ring. She crawls along the ceiling and walls, and she's an old lady, and she, like, sticks her tongue out like a fucking demon and French kisses boys. Is she one of the girls that has to, like, that he has to make fall in love? No, no, she's, she's like, a teacher or some shit. Okay, so it's, they're only classmates. It's not, okay. That's the punishment. Like, if the boys are alone, then they get they get assaulted by her, so. That's, all right. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really make any sense in the show. Like, why is that character there? What are you doing? But yeah. Definitely, I haven't seen that before, so. Kimi, the the I just want you to know, Nick. The uh, the Japanese name is Kimi no Koto ga Koto ga dai 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 ski na hundred ni no kanocho. I stuttered. You put an you put an extra die in there. I stuttered. You put an extra. No, that was me fumbling. It's like it's like Araragi. Yeah, Raki. Yeah. That's fucking. Yeah, funny. hundred girlfriends. I'm gonna keep watching it just so I can maintain the my girlfriend supremacy. You know, I'm on that. I'm on that girlfriend life now. You gotta keep up. The plummet boys got you. They got you, dude. Yep. You got got by the plummet. Everybody go uh, watch that episode. Everyone, girlfriend Smackdown. Everyone just go listen to the plummet, dude. They're on the link side. Animesummit.net too. Sister podcast recording the smut. I'm into it. Um, anime plummet baby. Okay. Oops, I clicked off the the damn page, Nick. Okay, here we go. Uh, I'll give that a maybe. I'll give the first couple episodes of that a watch because it does sound really funny. Um, oh, you went way down on there. I'm yeah, at your list. Long, oh, way down. I hate that song. Here, let's let's alternate. I have a couple up here, but you could take your next one. Oh, do you? Well, I don't even know where I'm going next. To be honest with you. I have Ragna Crimson and Berserk of Gluttony, which is the front runner for worst name of the season. <laughs> Berserk of Gluttony. It's like an AI generated title. <laughs> Wait, did you say Ragna Crimson? I thought that was a Danny one that we were waiting on. Oh, was it? Let me check. Oops. Oh Let's no, see. it's on her list, but it's not it's on starred. So yeah, we could Here, you do your next one. My throat's getting sore. Okay, sure, 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 sure. Yeah, I forgot you're dying over there. I'm in love with the villainess. What's that one, Nick? Um, a couple seasons ago, that people liked Otome game. No, how much Otome game villainous? I had to look that up. I'm like, is this a sequel to that or something? Yeah, it's not. I, I was like, I was like, did the anime? Did, there literally was an anime that was just like this. Um, but all ro- all roads lead to doom, where it's like the main girl is like, apparently she dies because she's the villainous. Yeah, it's the, it's the top recommendation. Yeah. So that's this one is and... called. Watashi no Oishi no Akuyuki Reijo, which is I'm in love with the villainess. And so basically, this this girl named Rei Ohashi, she, and I watched the dub of this, by the way, which is the dub is pretty funny. Um, and I, this wasn't, I wasn't planning to watch this. I just, I don't know why I clicked on it. I just did. And so, 
uh, she obviously she's a salary person. She's tired. Work sucks. And then um, she just gets transported into her favorite Otome game. And in this Otome game, they go to this like prestigious academy. All the characters do. And you're the the point of the game is you make your girl character right, or you know, so it's, it's a game for girls, obviously, or whoever targeted towards girls or femmes or whatever. And you're supposed to woo the Fujo Bates, which are the three princes of the kingdom, uh, the Bauer, the Bauer brothers. There's Rod Bauer, you Bauer, and Thane Bauer, and they're like really hot. The Bauer, the <laughs> they're really hot. You know, Fujo boys, top of the class, that kind of thing. But her, the, <laughs> she gets reincarnated as the character she created. So, the character that she likes the most is actually the Ojo Sama Claire Francois. And so she's like the bully character, right? And and she's like, but she's like, we all know my favorite character is actually, you know, Claire. I don't care about the three guys at all, even though like I've beaten this game millions of times, whatever the hell. Um, I I just play this game because I love Claire, and Claire like bullies her, and Ray is like, oh yes, bully me more. Like she's she's legit. The step. She's on- a uh, what is it? A masochist or a sadist? Yeah, no, masochist, masochist is where you like to get hurt, right? Yeah, like you know. Okay, so you know that shirt that kind of went viral, a T-shirt that went viral. It was like a meme, and it was a T-shirt. It was like fucking a year ago, a couple years ago, where it says, "Don't bully me," and and then the back of the shirt it says, "I'll come." <laughs> <laughs> she's literally that character <laughs> so she like every time that claire francois bullies her she's just like, she's like yeah oh my god you're so cute when you get mad uh and uh which actually makes ray the bigger bully i know she yeah. won't leave her alone <laughs> and there's a part where where claire steps on her foot and she under her breath she goes hurt her <laughs> <laughs> oh my god i missed that part <laughs> Dude, it was funny. I only, I only got the first two episodes, so maybe. Same, was same. That in the first I only two? did the first two. But, dude, it was funny as fuck, dude. It's so hilarious. And, like. Yeah, she becomes Claire's maid. Yeah. She blackmails yeah. the father into doing that because she knows, she knows something about him. Yeah. Yep. Because she's already played the game, so she, like, knows what's what's going on. Yeah. And she's like, well, who cares? I'm, like, reincarnated in this bitch now. I can do whatever the fuck I want. And I want to profess my love to Claire instead of these three dudes. So, fuck it. And so she kind of was able to work her way through the game or through the stories, events and everything in the game that way. And, you know, yeah, some other isekai reincarnated in the game BS, whatever the hell. But I mean, it doesn't really explain what happens. Isekais lately don't really explain what happens to the main character anyway. Yeah, they're just like, they're like, oh, well, I'm suddenly here. She's Yeah, she's literally just playing after work and then all of a sudden, boom, she's there. Um, And it's, it's, dude, it's just really funny. I, I mean... If it weren't for how funny it is and, like, the down bad bully me because I'm turned on by you bullying me, step on me, mommy character, I probably wouldn't watch it. But, like, it's literally, literally Ray, and her character's name is Ray Taylor because, like, you know, it's like a, it's supposed to be, like, a Europa-type country or school or whatever the fuck. But, like, um, if it wasn't for her and the Ojo-sama bully character being the two main characters, I would... I would probably not watch it. I because it's and it, it's yeah because everybody else is kind of an NPC. Yeah, and it's it's cool. It's like a magical academy as well, right? So like they're doing these, you know, they have these wands with these crystals at the end. It's kind of cool, and uh, it's basically if Draco and Harry Potter, but their girls fall in love with each other or trying, to, and one's a more, <laughs> you know, Draco's like a Ojo Sama, whatever the fuck. But it, I think it's hilarious, man. It's it's really funny. I this is not my kind of show at all. But like, I think uh, the writing is hilarious. It's very dorky. Very. It's just meme-y. It's kind of meme-y, You know what I mean? So. Yeah. 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 But yeah, it has, it has an accurate rating on seven point four. That's about right. And you know the character design is 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 whatever. It's 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 mid. You know, but like the drill hair girl is is good. Yeah. Just just because the hair, their eyes are a little <laughs> bit, uh, not that great, but it's fine. Yeah, yeah, agree. So yeah, that's that's. Uh, that, I think I might keep watching it just because if I don't finish it, I'll finish it at some point. Um, but like, I'm trying to. I'm still in my gauging stage. Like, I still don't know what I'm gonna finish yet, in my opinion. Um, so 
uh, let me go down to so ancient manga spread. We're gonna talk about with Danny. Yeah, I didn't. Well, I got I got a couple I could do here. Okay, oh, yeah, one, you I'll go do. ahead. You go Let's ahead. Just trade off here. Yeah, sure. Um, Ragnar Crimson. I thought the art in this I one watched, was wild. This was this is a double this is a double parter episode one. That's all I watched. Oh, this is like an hour long or whatever the hell. <sighs> oh God. Okay, this one. What did I? I don't even remember watching this. Oh, do you not? I watched like forty minutes of it. Okay, yeah, you got a guy, super overpowered. You know what? Let's skip that for this week. We're gonna go to okay. do that next week. <laughs> No, that's fine. I watched. I watched an episode. I just fucking. Well, it'll give me. It'll give me a chance to watch it too. So because I, I didn't yeah. get to watch it. I might do the same for Berserk of Gluttony. This one's not. It didn't stand out to me either. Um, I watched a couple episodes of this. Oh no, this one. Okay, this one had more of a hook. Okay, so the guy in Berserk, Berserk of Gluttony, his name is Fate. What a lazy name. <laughs> uh, Fate Graphite. He, uh, Fate Graphite. And his power is gluttony. Everybody in the world is born with a power or a skill. He is always starving and never sated until he kills a dying thief and devours the man's strength and his soul. The true hunger of his gluttony is awakened, and if he can control his power, he will at last be the master of his own destiny. Yeah, so he's like a poor guy. The uh, nobles are are bullying him and kicking him and shit. This one lady, uh, Roxy, takes pity on him, takes him in. And yeah, he uh, he buys a sword. The sword is named Greed. <laughs> oh, okay. um, yeah. The uh, so then he he figures out killing people is the only thing that sates his hunger. Damn. Not eating. Not actually eating food. Which is kind of funny. That's pretty much what happens in the first two episodes. He looks like um, Kirito knock off a little bit. Oh yeah, he does. Yeah. All cloaked in black, the black swordsman. The black swordsman. <laughs> it doesn't really go in depth on a lot of things. This is a seven point one two on Mal. That's probably right. It's I don't know. Do you it's think just, this is one of those kind of mid? It's one of those um It's one of those let's make a show about a really powerful hero just murking everyone. And making Uh kinda, yeah, getting vengeance on the nobles, bad. It's probably. Just, it's just badass. Yeah, the exposition insert. the exposition was a little bit ham fisted in this one too. Sure. Or like characters will refer to each other by their titles or whatever, and it's just like, oh, that's right, Duchess of whatever, blah blah blah. Or they didn't say that, but you know. Oh, you're talking about this character? You mean the one who does this? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't have a good example, but yeah, the a little bit awkward exposition. I've noticed a lot of shows do that. Yeah. Um. Because it's hard. It's hard to to ex to exposite. <laughs> exposite. <laughs> it's hard to do that with without just telling everything, you know, out in the open. So yeah, but yeah, the yeah, Berserker Gluttony. It has it has the dumbest name of the season. I'll remember that. I probably won't remember a lot else though. <laughs> you don't remember? Yeah, Berserk of Gluttony. It is kind of bad. That's like a that's like a fucking fourteen uh, year old Xbox Live handle or something like yeah. or Fortnite, I guess nowadays. <laughs> Whatever they're playing now. Whatever the kids are playing now. Edgy Fortnite. I'm Goku, and I'm my name is Berserk of Gluttony. X X. <laughs> it's Berserk X of X Gluttony. Yes. Twenty one. <laughs> yeah, dude. All right. Yeah, it seems seems mid. Seems mid. Seems mid. Um, okay, let's move right along, moving right along, moving right along. Then took all the good did, shows. That did bitch. you watch the vampire show? Which, uh, oh, the Ron Komahashi's Forbidden Deductions or whatever? Or no, no, no. No, uh, Vexations of a Shut-In Vampire Princess. I did not. No. Okay. Did you? I'll let you go to your next one because I got to rest my throat. Did you watch the Vampire Princess one? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I watched Under Ninja, the first episode of Under Ninja, because um, I had the I've I had the I've been planning to read the manga for a while, and uh, because I like the art in it, and um, uh, plus I love ninja stuff. You know, you barely see ninja stuff nowadays. Um, if it's not Boruto, you know, so 
Um, anytime I can consume something ninja like I, I want to. Um, in this case, um, it's about modern day ninjas, and the it's um uh, the after World War II Allied Command in Japan developed a new agency to help manage terrorism and violence within the Pacific region. The uh, agency was staffed with ninja, and they were initially tasked to handle domestic affairs. Eventually, that program grew to a current form, managing 20,000 ninja across a range of domestic and international affairs. And one of those ninjas happens to be Kudo, who is a 17-year-old high school loser. He is now poised to be in the next line of defense against potential surge and foreign assassins invading Tokyo. So, yeah, it's literally just, like, modern-day ninja shit, and it's... Tezuka Productions. They all have, like, ugly face. I mean, I, I yeah, I, I like that. I kind of like that. I kind of like that, too, sometimes. Yeah. The the anime though is is so annoying to watch. It like it just does not translate well. Like from what I've seen in the manga, anyways, and I, it just like uh, I don't you know I don't know who worked on this or who directed it, but it, it's very choppy. That there's in the beginning the opening scene where it shows like these um, I believe they are they are American soldiers kind of going into like a base. And they're going into like you know, take care of a terrorist. They find that the, the the terrorist, his head's already cut off. So it's like, oh, it looks like a ninja was here. It's like, oh shit. I guess uh, I guess I got taken care of before we got here. Whatever. And it was all CG, like the really kind of bad CG. You know, I mean, it wasn't terrible, but it was pretty terrible. Oh, cauliflower people. Look. And then all of a sudden, it goes to the two D animation with the when it shows the guys, the four ninja high school guys on the rooftop, including Kudo. And he lives in this like crappy apartment by himself, and then I don't know. It's I I kind of started losing attention because I was like, I don't want to watch this. It looks bad. Like uh, I don't know, man. It seems kind of funny. There's like some funny parts, um, and it just it doesn't look right. It just looks uh, ugly. Um, kind of hard for me to watch. Kind of wonky. Um, I think uh. I don't know if there would have been a better studio to handle this, but like if you look at the manga art or whatever, it just it looks really nice. There's a lot of these really crazy angles in it, and um, kind of reminds me of the artist who did uh the Crows movie manga adaptations. Uh, I don't know. I feel like it it, it would have been cooler if the right staff handled it, the right director handled it, you know. But I don't know. I I like the premise a lot though. I like the idea of the modern day ninja handling foreign affairs so like it's like like rico except you know instead of instead of the Lycos, it's they're ninja you know what i mean so um oh and there's no cute girl like recoil had uh cute girls though. had cute girls though that's what i'm saying see that's what all, all that matters is character design that's, all that that's what we've discovered is character design and a good op yeah dude that's all you need um and and, and again uh let me just let me just scroll here Satoshi Kuwabara, I mean, he boarded he boarded Dororo and and he's done a bunch of Detective Conan stuff or a few Detective Conan things. I mean, I don't know who this person is. I guess he's directed some Yu Gi Oh stuff. Um, oh, he boarded Adam the Beginning, which I liked Adam the Beginning a little bit. So I mean, I, he might be one of the main Tezuka production guys, but like, I don't know. He this is not. It just looks. It doesn't look good. I don't know. You know what I mean? It just looks bad. It looks bad to me. Um, Reina Iwasaki is the chief animation director. And, uh, I mean, looking at her resume, a lot of the stuff she's done is kind of mid. Some of it's really good, you know? So maybe that's why. I don't know, man. It just is whatever. So I'm going to just go read the manga. I'll just tell you that right now. Um I do have another one here before passing it back to Nick. I want I want him to chill for a little bit. But uh, Overtake, did you watch Overtake, Nick? Episode one. Okay, dude. This is an original by Studio Troika, okay? And Troika, they've done Out Noah Zero, Recreators, uh, some other stuff. I happen to like Recreators. I thought Recreators was great. Um, whoever they got to work on this, though, was... Is, is pretty cool, pretty amazing. Um, it, it, the production on this is, is pretty nice. It's pretty decent. It's one of the better things this season, I think, uh, 
animation and art wise. But basically, Overtake is this guy who's a freelance photographer, uh, Koya. He's kind of in a slump. Uh, it kind of gives this idea that he's got like some PTSD about an incident that happened. Yeah, he sees one of the <laughs> racers and he like freaks out for a second. Yeah, and he. But I, I didn't figure out why in episode one. And then, like, he was in the beginning, he was supposed to take a picture of a model, but then, like, he changed it last minute to do product shots. Um, so it's it's kind of apparent that he can't take pictures of people. He starts getting this. Like, oh, flashback. okay. Yeah. I just realized that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And then so he meets high school racer Haruka Asahina, who is a F four racer, Formula Four racing. Um, this is open top formula racing. So like, uh, you know, it's kind of like the dragster cars, you know what I mean? Not drag racing, but like, it's like the four wheels with like the big the spoiler. It's like, almost looks like a little rocket, you know? Um, I'm not big on racing. I, I don't know the different kinds of terms. Like, I know, Oh God, I don't know anything. Box yeah. car racing, formula one. I don't know. It. Grand- this, this is a, a fruit and Zella territory. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and Zach, Zach, uh, is Weibo Chad number two, by the way. He's he he actually works in that industry, so. Um, oh, he probably knows more than everybody. Though. Yeah, yeah, he would actually like this anime. We should tell him to watch it. I'll tell Danny to tell him. But um, he, they they kind of he he runs into Asahina who races for Komaki Motors, and so a lot of these Formula Four racing companies, you know, they're backed by money and big investors and things like that. Where Komaki Motors is kind of backed by you know, the assets they have, right? And just whatever they have. And um, Asahina is their only racer. And then the company president's son is the mechanic. And then there's the company president guy, uh, Futoshi Komaki. And he's just like this really nice guy who loves racing. He loves the hot, he loves the, he loves the sport, right? And he's showing Koya around. And then Koya decides after the first race happens in the first episode, um, which I believe was like it's supposed to be a qualifying race, I think. I don't remember. But like after it happens, um, I won't say how the race ends because I think it's important to the story. He decides that he kind of wants to like support Komaki Motors and uh and their and support them as a racing company. Um and it's just it's really cool. And and, and I they haven't gotten too much, and again, I've only watched episode one, like Nick. So I'm sure, like, we're going to figure out there are going to be layers peeled back with this character, this photographer character, and things like that, right? But, and what that has to do with Formula 4 racing, because he's a photographer, I have no idea. But I'm, I'm, what, I think what matters is the, is the, the growing, the inner growth, right? And I just, the, the Formula 4 racing is the, the backdrop. And, um, I gotta find. That's what everybody says about every sport anime. It's not <laughs> it's a, about the sport. It's blah a, blah blah. It's about the journey. But like, I mean, honestly, like the way it looks is so nice. It looks really nice. And I was, I was. Yeah, it actually does look pretty decent. This one strikes me as almost like Fujo bait, though. There's a lot of, a lot of hot dudes. There are a lot of hot dudes in it. I'm not gonna lie. But I was reading what some other people were talking about in our Discord. And how they watched the latest episode, and I was like, "Oh hell yeah, dude! Like, I'm glad that Overtake is actually sweet. It's actually a decent anime for people, and uh, I'm excited to watch more of it. So, I would really like to watch more of it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to, but I'm excited for that one, which is which is weird because like I wasn't gonna watch it at first. I was like, "Oh, it's just some Fujo racing stuff. I don't want to watch that." But then when I I just decided to randomly, and I was like, "I'm into it. This is great." Um. Okay, Nick, did you have another one before? Oh no, you didn't, right? We're we're back to we're caught up um, to get together. I do have some more stuff. Uh okay, hold on. MF Ghost. I think it's just yeah, MF Ghost. I right watched now. that one too. Uh but the first three episodes of MF Ghost I watched. Yeah, I'm just I'm just checking here. Yep, same here. Same here. Uh, I'm going to disagree with you, Sam. I think MF Ghost is a better racing show than Overtake. All right, calm down. Although Overtake is definitely different. That one's more of like a little more cerebral a little bit. Yeah, yeah. MF Ghost is just like hype. No, this is just It's hype. like initial D, but a little bit. I don't think it captures the same magic as initial D, <laughs> at least not yet. Yeah. But it's kind of close. It's the it's same. It's like kind of close. It's the same manga, Shuji Shigeno. 
Yep. And it yep. says same, this same is guy. A, this is a legacy sequel to Initial D. Yeah, and the char- the main character uh, Kanata Katagiri, he's half English, half British. Yeah. And he's related to. Is he he he's got to be the son of one of the racers, right? I don't know. You don't know who his father is. One of the is. initial. That's yeah. One of the initial D like cast is his father, I think. Well, they don't. That's yeah, they guess. don't know yet. I should know, but yeah, because yeah. um, he came to Tokyo to do MF racing to find his father. Yeah, and he runs into Itsuki Takuchi, who was uh, the sidekick from Initial D, basically the really goofy kid. Yeah, Iggy, and he's and now he owns. Uh, he own, what does he do again? He he works in the industry, kind of. Yeah, this is like, and also too, this is MFG racing. It's like its own thing, and this is it takes place like in the future, kind of. It's so it's it's, yeah. it's like regulated racing, where as opposed to like Initial D, it's street racing. And mountain, and he he also is trained by Takumi Fujiwara, who's who's a legendary downhill rally racer, uh, and so yeah, it, Fujiwara and Itsuki in the first few episodes are kind of helping him on this like qualifier race, I think. Yeah, I, I don't remember the name of the race. So, but the the thing that makes the show good is the fucking hype. It's just it, dude, hype you get hype. Shit, yeah, of. and the first three episodes are like the perfect kind of pocket to introduce you to the show. Because it's him coming to the country and then doing this qualifying race. And Fujiwara and Ryosuke are mentioned only by name. So if you don't hear... And it's mentioned very subtly. So, like, if you're not initial D fans, you know, like, right away, and you might not know. But, like, um, Ryosuke Takahashi, who was part of the Red Suns uh, in initial D, he owns the league or whatever. The MF oh, Ghost. Oh yeah, is yeah. he was he the surgeon or was that Yeah, uh... he was the surgeon. Okay, yeah. yeah. He's like washing his hands, he's on the phone, he's like, "Oh, interesting. <laughs> I have a surgery coming up, but you know, keep me posted on this new racer." He you was know? waiting for him. It's almost like he was waiting for him to show up to Tokyo because he knows that he's Takumi's so... student at his racing school. So Takumi Fujiwara that, that okay, wait a second. Takumi Fujiwara so who is, is the guy who drives the Treno. He's the main character. Well, I know in, in Initial D, I know that, but like in in this show, MF Ghost, you have the two older guys who are mentoring uh, Kanata. Yeah. Who's the other guy? Oh, Kuichiro Ikatani? No. Yeah, he's it just another racer. So you have Itsuki and you have the other guy. The other guy is not Takumi, right? That's a different guy. No. No. You don't see Takumi at all yet. At least I don't think so. I don't know if you see him at all. There's... You see, well, you see another guy like lusting over uh, Kanata's girl slash girlfriend. Oh, that guy. Yeah, he's just another Ren. racer. Yeah, he's another guy. Yeah. Okay. I was like, Takumi wouldn't do that. He he already have all the ladies and everything. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So you also yeah. So Ren is like the love interest slash host family girl. Like she's his host family, right? Yeah, because he's staying with her family. Yeah. And then it, and she's also one of the uh, angels or whatever they call the them. MFG the MFG angels, yeah, the MF girls. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Like, there's an episode one or two where she's like, she hears his name as she's like holding up the sign or whatever in her super skimpy outfit, and she's like, "Oh my god, that's him." <laughs> that was hilarious, dude. You know, you she wants it. She wants some of that. She wants some of that. And then dude. she, yeah, she walks up and slaps him. Yeah, he's supposed to be the super good looking guy. He looks like a regular character. I don't know. I mean, he does. like, I don't get the appeal. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't look as derpy as Itsuki, at least. So there you go. <laughs> nah, yeah. He's, nah, he's all hot, takes. dude. He's hot. He's like all, he's like a swab. Takumi Fujiwara beats him, though, for sure, dude. Mm-hmm. Although in the, in the, in the original initial D, he looked, everybody looked derpy in the initial, in the first one. <laughs> Fujiwara, like the reason why Fujiwara was hot in initial D was because he was mysterious. And he didn't spill the water. And he didn't spill the water, dude. But like that's, this is just this is just like a side recommendation that everybody needs to watch Initial D. Yeah, no, you everybody. should. Everybody, I don't even care if you don't like anime, you should watch that show. Yeah, no, seriously, it's cool because the the Euro Beat soundtrack is just like, it's so good. <laughs> that was my thing with this, right? I was like, okay, if I watch this and there's no Euro Beat music in it, then you fucked it up. You already messed it up. No, they they got it. They got it. it. It's not it's, it's not the same stuff, but it's it's, it's different there. stuff, but. Yeah, hopefully they'll have some more some banger tracks later on. Yeah, even the OP is is a Eurobeat song too. So, uh, which is 
What is it called? I just had it. I just fucking had it, dude. I just had it up. It's not as good of a soundtrack as Initial D. It's not, at least not yet. Not yet. The the, the OP is okay. The 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 Eurobeat they played so far is fine. Like it's not bad. Jungle it, Fire. Be- and I'll put it this way: it's better than most. It's better than most like uh, seasonal anime soundtracks. Yeah. But it's not Initial D level, so. Yeah, Jungle Fire featuring Motsu by Yu Serizawa is the song. Um. I do think it's cool that the main car that the main character drives is also a Toyota 86. Um, where yeah, and they're talking about how it, it lacks certain characteristics yeah, to, yeah. to win to win the race. Because apparently the best the best cars in MFG racing are like European cars, and so he's the main character is using. They run on croissants. Yeah, they run on croissants. The main character is using a Toyota, but he's able to drive it. He's so good at racing that he's able to like do really well and uh i won't say how he does in this first yeah, we, race but yeah like, we don't want to spoil what happens in the race but, but it it's interesting how that how it all turns out yeah it's really um, cool and i what i liked actually i really liked that there was a drone following the car which i, I assume they do in real life too um yeah now for certain races yeah um because like before obviously it was just kind of like they didn't have drones in, in no, the year 2000 no so. yeah no and, well, they did, but not commercial. And this and this this show takes place in like a a twenty twenty X or t- early twenty thirty future. So they kind of it like says twenty twenty X, yeah. So it probably well, and they they also mentioned that like shortage of fossil fuels or something at the start of the oh, show. Did they? Oh, which they, they might never have, really plays into it. I don't think it, I it's just kind of it. like a backdrop. I might have missed that. It's a for climate like a, change. And, and now, yeah, and now racing is more popular than ever because it's taboo or something like that. Yeah, so. yeah. But yeah, dude, it's a Sport 86, so it's like a G. It's a G86 is what it is. Um, I have as much knowledge about cars as, like, the average nerd, I guess, so pretty much as the average person. So, like, I don't, you know, I know what cars I like, and that's it. I don't know anything about much anything else. I like red ones. <laughs> All I know is that, like. That's my knowledge. My first car in Initial D ever, when I first started playing Initial D in the arcade, was a uh, Evo 3 Lancer. It was my favorite car, and it was the only car that I ever got every mountain stamp on, and I never was able to beat the the Tofu Challenge with it, where uh, you do you basically do ta- Takumi's like route, delivering tofu, but with your car, and you can't spill the water. And I always spill the water. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> like <laughs> this is Sam at your uh, your therapist. <laughs> You're just like crying that you spilled the water. Yeah, it's like I just spilled the water, man. <laughs> Anyways, therapist is like perhaps you've spilled the water in life as well. <laughs> 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 just like make it all overly deep. I will say this: so even if you're not a fan of Initial D, um or you don't know much about it initially, you can still watch this, I think, and be fine. Um, yeah, you can start here, and it's fine, yeah. and then go back and watch Initial if D. If you want to go back and watch Initial D, yeah. Because um, this, how many episodes? 12 episodes for 12. this? yeah. I don't know how long it's not, the It's not a going. bad starting point, I guess. But, but I remember yeah. talking about this on the newscast like fucking three, four years ago, and finally being able to watch it now is super cool. So, hell yeah, dude. Um, and the CG's not that bad, and I, I appreciate the CG because... Oh, it looks better than Initial D for sure. Yeah, because in Initial D, you know, they do kind of the, you know, lazier shots and stuff when the animation takes a dip. And this, when you do CG with cars like this, you can watch how they do all the turns and drifts and stuff. And I think the, I think these cars actually look pretty good. Yeah, I think they look fine. The way they animate it, this looks way better than the average, like, anime car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not perfect, but, like, I had no complaints about it. No, yeah, I think, it's, I think it looks fine. I think it looks really nice. Anyways, Nick, did you watch any more? I got one more, I think, and then I'm. Uh, I think it's all you. I'm looking. You have a, you have potions and shy on there. Okay. And sixteen bit sensation. Okay, let me just talk about. I shall survive using potions. Plummet, you got it. I'm, that's it. I'm not gonna watch that. <laughs> it's just like it was really bad. <laughs> Wait, what? The only thing I liked. Okay, so this girl. Oh yeah, God! Look at the poster. Yeah, she unexpectedly <laughs> dies. Gets re. Re-re- this looks hilarious. She gets resurrected in a fantasy world, and the, the, they're like, "Okay, what's the catch that you want? What's the thing that you want?" And she's like, "The power that I want is to be able to make any potions for any reason for, for whatever." Blah blah blah. 
So she's basically I'm potions master. She can make a potion for anything, whatever. And um it just was like they kept doing all the meta Isekai stuff and it was just really dumb. I I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I just it, really predictable, dumb. Uh I do I do, however, like the fact that the goddess person who was like giving her her reincarnation powers let her say goodbye to her family and stuff. And her family was basically like, oh, damn, got to get Isekai, you dumb bitch. And so it's like, they're like, oh, you guys aren't even sad that I died. And she's like, oh, you're, you'll be fine. You're really smart. You know, you'll be all right in whatever world you go to and blah, blah, blah. I did like that. It was kind of a nice, like, different thing. Anyways, it's, it's, otherwise it's dumb. Uh, Shy, this one was, I was really excited about. Um, Shy is just as the planet approached its third world war. Individuals with superpowers appeared from around the globe to maintain peace. They became the symbols of their respective nations, striving to limit crime and bring evildoers to justice. Teenage heroine Teru Mo, uh, Momijiyama is Japan's representative of the world of heroes. She is uh, her hero name is Shy. When a mysterious threat called uh, Amalarix emerges, um, Shy must work together with her fellow heroes from the other countries to stop them at all costs. So basically, it's like this world where like. There's no wars or anything. It's just there's just peace and um, whatever. And so each nation has a hero, and the main character Teru is like this really shy kid. She's like this shy seventeen year old girl or whatever, um, sixteen seventeen. I don't remember, but she is. She also has a lot of like anxiety, and so I'll just say this. Uh, I'll kind of spoil the first episode for you because this is like the first half of it. This roller coaster gets fucked up. Um, she takes this job introducing like a stage, a kid stage play with like these Power Ranger characters, right? And then while she's like going off the stage, getting off the stage, this roller coaster gets stuck in a loop de loop. And so she saves the passengers one by one. And the one girl at the front of the roller coaster says, Save me last, save everyone else before me. And she's like, Okay. So she's like flying up and whatever. The fucking roller coaster starts going again and it launches the fucking girl who's the last girl left on the damn roller coaster and she catches it, but it hurt the girl gets hurt in the process. And so Shy feels really bad. She's like, well, I fucked up. I should have saved her earlier. I should have went for her first. Like, blah, blah, blah. And then it, dude, the first episode is really like, if you've ever seen Spider Man 2 with Tom, Tom McGuire, you've seen it, right, Nick? Oh, God. Yeah, when it came out. Yeah, that the Doc Ock one. There's that part in that movie yeah. where, like, his powers are lacking because he feels shitty about like what he's able to do as Spider-Man. Like, you know what I mean? And this first episode is to kind of build Teru's character is like that part of the movie. And I kind of like that. It was kind of cool. Um, and then later this building comes on fire, just like in Spider-Man two, this building goes on fire and she decides to go in and save him. And she kind of realizes like, after having this slump for however many months, right? Because she, the one girl on the roller coaster got hurt. Um, she finally just is like, no, you know what? I got to go in. I'm a hero. That's why I became a hero. I'm going to do this bitch. And she goes in and she saves people in the apartments on fire. And it's a really cool moment. It's really cool. It kind of just, it kind of is just the first episode. It does exactly what it's supposed to do, which is to show you this character who, despite her, like the things that would probably make her a bad hero, actually turns her into a good one and is why she like she's it's like she's a hero for all the right reasons you know what i mean and like that's why it's it's kind of cool with great power comes great ass dude literally like that's literally- <laughs> i'm just thinking of the meme of spider-man like on the train tracks <laughs> <laughs> or no it's like a spider-man's like butt yeah, yeah yeah what's that old spider-man cartoon i don't know that it's like it's an old one spider-man and his amazing friends yeah Anyway, it's got go huge ahead. ass. No, dude, like that's exactly what it that's the the fucking exact quote that was going through my mind when watching this this first episode was literally with great power comes great responsibility. And it's like that's why she kind of was like, not nah, like I have to do this. Like it was it was really cool. It was it was cool to see it in an anime. And I like I like the character designs. I like the hero designs. I like how it's uh, there was also some aspects of it where it was, it was turning into a well, who watches the watchman 
kind of thing. You know what I mean? Not because the heroes are dangerous, but because they're like, do we even really need them? Like they're kind of useless. Like what the fuck are they doing? You know? And it kind of added to her like anxiety. You know what I mean? She was like, am I like, does it really matter that I'm a hero at all? Like I can't even fucking do anything right. She was so busy focused on the one girl that got hurt that it didn't matter that she saved like fucking 15 other people out of that roller coaster and she let it get to her. And like, I think that most with most people with anxiety or social anxiety, like, um, you know, can relate to that. And I think this is kind of a really cool to have it in this kind of theme and setting. It was a really cool show and I really like it. It's studio eight bit. Um, it's, uh, based on a manga, apparently. I, um, but, uh, you know, and, and it, I think it looks really decent too. You know, it's not anything wild, um, but like, you know, there's, I do like the character design a lot. I like the, I like her outfits. I like her hero outfit. It's like this cute white kind of, um, leotard top with these boots. And she's got like a thruster on the back that looks like a, looks like a vent kind of, um, and it's cool. I don't know. I like it. I like her little white mask too as well, but I think it'll be a cool show. It could end up being a really cool show, you know, depending on how they handle it, the story. You know, I haven't read the manga obviously, but. Anyways, I like that one. I'm going to keep watching it. That one for sure is one I'm going to keep watching. The last one I watched after that was, um, I didn't get to start as telepath because for some reason on the website, I was watching things on, I couldn't find it. Um, but I did find it somewhere else. So I'll, I'll watch it then. Um, uh, um, and also just really quick, you guys, the, the plan for attack on Titan was for me and Nick to review the show as a whole. I don't know how we're doing that yet, but like we're we're, we're going to talk about it later, and that's why we're not going to talk about it now. So yeah, I've already clicked on spoilers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but um, okay. So the last one I watched for this batch, I guess. <laughs> I, I saw King. He's like, I should not have clicked that. <laughs> yeah, it's like I shouldn't have clicked that. Um, because <laughs> like all of us all click on all the spoilers. Like we we do properly tag stuff in Discord, but everyone everyone clicks just on clicks them. It. Yeah. I don't because I'm not a yacht. Because here's the thing. I'm hoping to click on it and have it like not actually be a spoiler. And then I can feel all smug and be like, huh, you barely spoiled you it. You barely spoiled it. <laughs> um, This last one was actually recommended to me because I didn't see it on my, it wasn't going to be on my list until I saw it um, until someone recommended it to me, which was Mike. Shout out to Mike from the plummet. Um, dude, this show is, I love this. I love this fucking show. It's called 16 bit sensation. Another layer. It's based on a web manga. Um, by uh, 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 Tamaki Wataki, uh, Tamaki Waka, Wakaki, and this girl, Konoha Akisato, is an illustrator. Okay, she she draws she draws waifus. She loves beautiful girls in bishojo games. Relatable. This character is me. She's a fucking me. Um, she works at a video game studio and aspires to become a super famous illustrator. However, uh. Reality didn't turn out that way because in the, the the game company she works for, they just make bullcrap big titty waifu sub genre games, and they're just whatever. For they just make click 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 here to get boob games. You know what I mean? And um, one day during lunch, she's like warming up a couple a cup of ramen, and the, she discovers a microwave doesn't work. So she's like, "Fuck, I'm gonna go get lunch." So she goes out to buy lunch, and she crosses the store called uh i forgot what the store is called it's not important but it's like a used game store and she goes inside of the store and oh by the way you guys there are advertisements for all kinds of waifu games all over this this fucking show in when she walks outside in the beginning there's fate grand order there's um uh what was that one I forget, but there's also like you. They also show uh, an inside shot of her room, and there's she's got a poster of Job Co. from like Rico. She's got like a bunch of stuff. There's like, and then you know, I don't know how they got permission for all that, but when she walks into this used video game store, she finds a box of of old, old Otome and old Bashojo visual novel games, uh, Comic Party, Joke Dokusai, uh, Kenan, um. A bunch of really popular like waifu games from the nineties. Okay, a lot of these games 
walk so a lot of the current waifu stuff we have now could run okay we'll just say that and again i don't know how they got like permission to like use all these images of these actual games and things like that in here but it it makes for a layer of cool in my opinion so that being said she's like geeking out to the granny about these games because she's got them priced at like 100 yen or a thousand yen and she's like dude these games are so rare and amazing you should price them way higher like this one itself sells on ebay for like like two hundred dollars and she's like oh well the boxes look really dingy and i'm an old granny blah 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 she's like okay well after work i'm gonna come visit you because i like your store and you're a really nice granny and you listen to me geek out about otome games and bashojo games and i really like cute girls and you listen to me geek out about it and you're the only person who cares about how much i care about it and you know things like that and she's like oh well you're you're a nice girl you can come by anytime she goes by after work and the store is just gone and there's a bag there and a note and the note says here you can have this as a gift from the old granny or whatever and she's like there's no way that the store got cleared out in four hours anyways she opens the dokusei game and gets transported back to 1992 and so she gets she runs to her old job and there's a different video game company there called alcohol soft (laughs) and uh she runs into like the main debugger guy and she gets a job there. I haven't watched the rest of the... I only watched episode one. But... It's really cool because, like... it. So, the top recommended show is Remake Our Life. It's basically that. Except with this girl who likes to draw beautiful girls. And she likes waifus. And wants to, like... Have her own characters be in, like, waifu games. You know? And uh, it's really cute. I don't know. Like, I don't know what else to say. Like, it's just, I'm just summarizing the first episode for you because I want you guys to watch it. I think it's, I think it's really cute. Anyone who's like an artist or who is into waifu games or who knows some of these, you know, waifu games from back then, who's a nerd about some of that stuff like I am. And who's also, I'm also an illustrator who loves, who loves girls, waifu girls. I love, I love big titties and big boobs, beautiful women. I love all that shit. And it's just relatable to me. So I just like. I think that's why Mike recommended it to me. And Mike also is a fucking nerd for a lot of those older video games as well. He's a big collector and stuff. So I think that's why he recommended it to me. But I mean, I mean, I just love it. You guys, I think you guys should watch it. If you're not already watching it, you really should. I think it's really cute. And it's, it actually is. It does look cute. I'm watching the PV right now. Yeah. And it's easy on the eyes. It looks nice. It looks decent. You know, um, studio silver, not silver link, silver, just silver. Just silver, um, as which I think they've done a couple uh, pornos before. Yeah, they've done some porn. They've done some, hell some yeah. porno. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah, bro. Um, but yeah, there's. I, I think. Um, I think it 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 it's it's really cute. Uh, the main character is also really cute. She's just she, man. Her dream is just to draw beautiful girls, have her her beautiful OC girl characters in video games. And have people buy those video games and fall in love with them like she loves them. And I think that's an amazing dream. You know, I, I think that's fucking cool. I mean, I, in my opinion, it's like I seen some of the patrons wearing like the shirt. They bought some of our merch and they're that's my artwork on their shirt. And I'm just like, that's fucking cool, man. That's cool to me. That's that shit's like that shit's dreams, dreams for me. You know what I mean? And I just relate to it in that sense. And I think it's really cute. I think it's adorable. So, yeah, that's all I got. That's all I got, man. I, I you know what? I, I, I think I lacked an episode count because I was trying to just ran. I was randomly clicking on a bunch of random shit, and I didn't get to everything I wanted to get to. But I'm, I'm glad that I sampled more than I normally would have, and I'm glad I kind of went outside of my box a little bit. Um, yeah, that's good. Yeah, and I, I so I, I, I hope to at least, no matter how much I finish at the end of the season. I hope to at least sample way more than I normally do. Um, I'm trying to sample way more um, than what I have been doing the last couple of seasons. So, yeah, and actually, these episodes are not as hard as the finish, the final season finale, because we only got to watch like a few per show on this one. But for the season finale, it's like, oh no, if I'm finishing eight shows, that's eight times nine. <laughs> it's like that many episodes I have to watch. Right. Right. <laughs> Right. So um, yeah, it's not, it's not it's it's a lot. the The main part is like keeping it all, keeping track of everything. 
Got to take better notes, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There was also um there was also Fully Cooly Shoegaze, which we'll probably talk about. Is that is that one done? It's done. It was only three episodes. Okay. So there's Fully Cooly Shoegaze and Fully Cooly Grunge. Just out of morbid curiosity, I might watch it just to shit on it. There there are three episodes each, Grunge and um Shoegaze. Um they're Shoegaze was or grunge is probably the one that that is the most different. I don't I don't know if I don't know if there's anything about shoegaze that's like Oh god, uh, FLCL Grunge has four point seven three on Mel. That's so bad. Yeah. I have no idea. Shoegaze six point one nine. All right. Yeah, she, it's not it's not uh, horrifically bad at Shoegaze least. Shoegaze apparently has the one girl from the alternative or progressive, I don't remember the other one. She, where, where it was like the four friends, alternative. Uh yeah. yeah, was progressive the bad one? Progressive was the bad one. Alternative was like kind of mid. It was fine. Alternative was like was like a, a a not as exciting version of the original but with four girls instead of just the one now to, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. The original is underrated on on Mal. It's eight point oh three. I know, like, it's like rever- it's like rating deflation for the old shows, but this is way too low of a score. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it should be like a nine on Mal. <laughs> That's my opinion. But I mean, I, Mal scores it should probably be like an eight point five Mal. But for me, it's like a ten. But yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Sidebar. Sidebar. Uh, but that being said, we'll probably talk about that in its own episode, just like we did with the last, you know, fully coolly apps. Um, and obviously, again, we'll call it cash grab episode. Cash grab, and then obviously, title pending. Um, you know, we're continuing. Zom one hundred is not going to be done until December, so we won't talk about that until later. Um, and then obviously, Jujutsu Kaisen season two, we're watching. Um, I don't think there's anything else from the previous season that we're carrying into this one besides Jujutsu Kaisen. In Zom 100, but that being said, um, Pluto was another one we want to talk about. It's a Netflix. Yep. Are we gonna do a separate episode on that? Because that one's done. We could if you want. If you guys want to do that, you could. We could do Pluto and the Fooly Coolies all in one. I mean, if you, yeah, if you want, yeah. I mean, I'm not gonna. You do whatever. What are we gonna do? Thunderbolt Fantasy. Many... That's what. That's my question. I told. I kept telling you guys to watch that. Dude, it's so good. <laughs> you uh, you just started watching it? No, I, I I started watching it when you told me to watch it three years ago. Oh shit! Yeah, I'm only but it I'm started only one and a half that. seasons in. Yeah, I haven't finished season two. Okay, I'm just looking at it. Pluto, uh, that should be its own episode because each each episode is an hour. Yeah. So Naoki Urasawa. It's like an eight Astro hour boy, ONA. Pluto arc or whatever the the. That's a high score for Mal. Oh boy. Yeah. But yeah, dude. So, I mean, let us know what you're watching. And then, of course, when Danny comes back, she'll let us know what what she's watching. And we can go over some. There's a couple of things that her and I are watching together that I missed. Um, and a couple of things that we're watching together that she wanted us to wait on. So we'll get on with that. I know y'all probably want to hear my take on Undead Unluck because it's like one of my favorite things coming out of Jump right now. Um, and yeah, Absolutely. Um, which I plan on doing a thing with un- uh, with Undead Unlock in a separate thing. Maybe it'll be a patron only exclusive. Who knows? Poopy 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 poop. That being said, let us know what your favorite uh, fall shows are currently. And uh, if we missed anything, you know, say hey, Sam, are you gonna talk about this one? Nick, are you gonna talk about this one? Dan, are you gonna talk about this one? Honeybear, are you gonna talk about this one? Which like Honeybear's not even watching anything. So good luck with that. That being said. Uh, I love you guys very much. Thanks for listening every week. And again, go to AnimeSummit.net. Get you a t-shirt. Take a selfie. Take a, take a selfie with the shirt on, but make sure your pet's in it. If you got a cat or a dog or a snake. Yes. That's how we got the Mallory emoji. Yeah, that's how you have, you have to do it with your pet. Like, if you take a selfie with a merch on and there's no pet in the picture, I'm not, I'm going to, I'm going to delete it. I'm going to, no. It's, it's, it'll, it's illegal, actually. In the, in the, it's a federal law. I pass it. Nick Pat Nick took it to Congress literally this morning. Yep. It's illegal. It's illegal, bro. 
That being said, I've been Sam. That's been Nick. This has been the Fall First Impressions Part 1 and the Anime Summit Podcast.